Robert Capitan, dear friends and dear colleagues. First of all, uh, let's just enlarge the, the, the uh, field that uh, Laszlo Karvalic talked about, because what we want to talk about is not only semiotics, but also sociology and cultural anthropology. And as Elemir Hankish put it, philosophical anthropology, which actually uh, covered or characterized the latest decades of his uh, work. And within that, we are going to uh, focus on certain targeted uh, topics, and we focus on symbols. Elemir Hankish's oeuvre actually uh, included symbols to a great extent, and his mm, understanding and uh, mm, his concept of symbols will be described by uh, Gabor. But let me just say first that we were very privileged, and a few privileged people actually, in, uh, that we've known him through 40 de four decades in different roles. And that's important to press because during the two days uh, we will talk a lot of areas of his work that need to be uh, carried forward but we also think that his attitude his personality and his uh, habits also need to uh, continue into the future these shine through his works because luckily he was able to work in a manner in a style that his habit actually was reflected and his attitudes were reflected in his works and uh, we were lucky enough to have known him personally first we were uh, his students and later his peers and colleagues i think this, the title student really fits me because in the uh, 70s i attended alta university uh, where he uh, was a lecturer for a while and one of his seminar was, as we today would put like a research seminar, it was very difficult to get into just 10, 15 people who were able to attend and have a place there. And uh, what's important to remember is that as a lecturer or a teacher, he was constantly asking questions. That was very characteristic because he was just always very, very interested in the other person's approach, the other person's angle, the other person's experiences. And also in those days, Utrecht uh, University uh, was basically uh, characterized by uh, a very respectful, too respectful probably, uh, a way of lecturing. And he was different because he treated us as equals, as students as equals, which uh, was different to the other lecturers. Institutes of Sociology, we worked as colleagues, and also for a few years he actually uh, was director of that institute. And one of the first conversations when he became director, uh, it's important to remember, he convened a meeting with the staff and he started that uh, he encourages everybody to just list and, and share what he we think the most important social issues of the time and then continue saying what research they were planning for the next few years and what methodology to uh, they were planning to, to research these issues. And if you compare that today's academic world, how it works and how it's set up, and basically the whole thing is turned upside down, but his approach uh, was uh, always, throughout his years, uh, was characterized by the fact that he always saw the social issues as a starting point and, and then uh, paired it with the approaches and the research. One of his la the one of the last conversations that I had with him in the Orsak Hastri Sociology Institute, or another name, uh, uh, it was a beautiful building uh, or a, a courtyard inside the building. Uh, it used to be uh, a cloister. Sitting in the courtyard there together with him uh, next to a beautiful fountain, and we were just talking about how wonderful 
it was that he, throughout his year, he managed to preserve his youthful spirit, as, almost like a teenage spirit. And we asked how it happened, and then he responded uh, with uh, almost like a 30-minute uh, itemized kind of uh, presentation, the physical stamina and the intellectual stamina, how we can preserve that. I can't uh, collect all of that, but I'm happy to do that later.